I think it's important to contextualize what's happening because not only are there broad sweeping changes to the machinery of government to facilitate this new relationship and sweeping policy changes, but there is also rapid legislative change. This chart demonstrates that uh, there have been 41 pieces of legislation passed on Indigenous issues since Confederation. There are currently 16 that have been passed or introduced by this federal government. If all those pieces of legislation pass over the course of three years, this government will be responsible for 40% of all legislation affecting First Nations uh, or Indigenous peoples generally. And we think that that's pretty dramatic. This embodies one of the biggest um, problems with the way that the federal government treats Indigenous people, which is to separate the idea of programs and services that is education, infrastructure, healthcare, other kinds of support from the land. As if the programs and services are a kind of welfare program or a kind of charitable part of the program that's disconnected from the fact that indigenous people's lands were dispossessed from them through the process of colonization. I think it's important for all First Nations to identify whether they think that this is a no-go or not. But for myself and for a lot of First Nations in BC, we see an opportunity to move the needle, to move progress forward. And then once we get that, then we can continue to advance that conversation even further to do the work around land and the re uh, repatriation of land, as well as a whole number of other issues. So I'm much more cynical in what the government does and, and how they watch us. And um, I'm seeing it as, I'm calling it their trauma-informed approach, yeah. is that <laughs> they know our trauma and they know how to exploit it, and that's how they move forward. We have diverse opinions at this table. Uh, we continue to, we'll continue to have diverse opinions, and it would be easy for us to be able to solve our own problems, but Canada comes to us and says, it's this one path or nothing, and that's the problem. I think one of the important things to highlight is that when it comes to how the framework is being developed and how these, uh, you know, this new relationship is kind of conceptualized, it's in a co-development framework. And co-development isn't autonomy and co-development isn't self-governance. It's not sovereignty. It's necessarily creating this, that codependency within policy and legislative design, whereas sovereignty is just doing it on your own.